Hi guys. Um, yesterday I announced that my husband Vaughn has passed away. Um, this was something that a lot of people did know about, but um, I did confirm yesterday. And my mom was such a huge part of Vaughn's journey before and after brain injury. And, you know, she came over here because she brought me flowers because it's my anniversary today. And can you guys hear us okay, by the way? But mom wanted to say a few things. First and foremost, We got to enjoy life with a beautiful, beautiful man. I got to see my daughter and my son spend time together, cherish each other. And show so much love and compassion, not for only each other, but for their children. And they shared their beautiful life with you. And us. I really did get a front row seat. <laughs> um, I And I can't read anything, so I'm... I don't have no glasses. Anyway, um, for a while before, and I guess this is trigger warning, yeah? Yeah, trigger warning. Um, before my son attempted, I was um, conducting studies with my grandbabies, um, each individual one, and over Zoom for whew, probably six months. He saw all the changes that, how much Bella loved it. He wanted some of that. And he re-engaged in a Bible study himself with someone else. And boy, he progressed. He loved life. And it showed his joy. It exuded. He, some of these videos um, prior to his attempt, can be seen at the missing puzzle pieces. The missing puzzle pieces. And that was Vaughn. And he was, boy, it was beautiful to watch. Sadly, he had a low moment. And it, it, it was tragic for all of us. Um, before I continue, I want to thank you. So, so very much. For your love and for your kindness. Sorry, I'm a mess. Oh my goodness. Because we, you're on the go, you go, you know, you, you take care of business and, and you just, this is how we handle it for now. And um, um, that day was, was a hard day. Um, I started out my morning, I was going to do some volunteer work. I was already ready. And um, <clears throat> I got a call from my, my granddaughter and she asked me to pray with her siblings. And I had told her, cause I could hear it in her voice, 
let me pray with you too. She said, um, no, I got to go help mom. I said, it's okay. I'll be brief. And while I was praying um, with my grandbabies, um, as I was getting closer to the end of my prayer, I could hear Andrea calling for her. And um, she said, she fin I finished my prayer and she said, I'm, I'm on the phone with grandma. And she said, stay inside. So since that had happened, <clears throat> um, I remembered. And I, um, and the reason why she wanted me to pray for them is because she said that grandma pray for us because mom went outside with a knife. And so, and so anyway, when I finished my prayer, Andrea said to stay inside. So I told my grandbabies, okay, why don't you go to the room and we'll zoom. We've always zoomed. I zoomed with each child um, once a week. So I was in their house, not physically, but but regularly. So anyway, um, and we had we we talked. They took the computer around. We spent time together. Anyway, um, I was sitting there zooming with my grandbabies as they were sitting in the bedroom, and I looked down and I see on my phone a text message that says, "Mom, come now." So I said, "Okay, you guys stay in the room." I gotta go. I'm gonna go over there, but I gotta get ready. So anyway, and that was ran to Tucson. I ran to Yuma, drove there right away, got there early, stayed with the grandbabies, and we drove back the same day. And we have been a support for each other constantly, daily. Um, and we appreciate the love and support that you guys have shown. Um, I knew in my mind that I wanted to be the kind of support that Andrea needed, not this kind of support that I thought she would need. This was a moment where she had to see something no one should. And at this time, she should never be forced to do anything beyond what she would feel she needed to do at the time. She was the one that made, had the right to make those choices. Sadly, you know the way things turned um, with, with regard to social media, and I'm not here to speak about that behavior. Um, but I'll tell you what, we rose above. And I got to see my daughter um, with a determination and a strength that I'm very proud of. I got to see Juan with the many beautiful changes that he would he would make, and he I mean, turn his head. Yeah. Yeah. He would turn his head, and that was at the VA hospital. Yeah. And he was transferred down to a step down hospital after that. He started opening his eyes like, really quickly. And then when he first started opening his eyes, his eyes weren't even like straight. One eye was this way, the other eye was this way. And then they would move back and forth. Within a few weeks, they straightened out. And when he first started opening his eyes, only one would open and slowly the other one. After time, not just opening his eyes, but he would stretch, arms would move. After four months, he started using his voice. He, when I first heard it, I, I screamed. I was at the hospital. He was in the hospital during this visit. And there was a nurse in the room and I thought I heard his voice and, and I was like, did you hear that? And 
you know, she didn't want to admit it because they do not want to admit that he is actually there, literally responsive, despite the way that he looks. He was always judged on his outward appearance, but he continued to progress and do things that doctors said that he never would. It was amazing to see him. And during this time, this was when I was off social media. This is also when lies were spread that he has already passed. When, when the, lo, those lies were spread, he was at home in the care home, you know, which was in the mountains in a great area. You know, he was safe and at that time safe and was loved and cared for and the internet ran wild. And it was not my job to speak up and confirm at all. I had a man's life in my hands that I had to make decisions for every step of the way. And, and not only was Andrea, but my grandbabies were so happy to be with him, to see him. They would go and they would tenderly kiss Vaughn and talk to him and love him. And this was every day, daily. Yeah. So, so I, um, but I wanted to do this at the time that my daughter chose to, and it was the right thing to do. And I'm so thankful for your love and for exercising patience and determining to not let any one negative um, influence um, your good judgment. Um, you read actions and you saw love. And um, and so we thank you so, so much from the bottom of our heart, from our whole heart, really. Um, we appreciate all the, the support that we've been given, all the defense that you've made, you know, or the silence that you kept whenever it was asked of you, you know and the uh, kind words and you know these are beautiful things that you have shown um, toward our family and we're fine um, i'm telling you um it was sad to see that kind of action from humanity or the the advantage taken on people who experience a tragedy you know um, with wild imaginations um, that they had, you know, um, but but we we never allowed it to influence how we treated them, especially her. She never let it influence how she treated her children, how she treated her husband, how she treated me or my husband. Her actions were always to um, to show love and kindness and um, and I think we all could take a page from that right yeah so um, I love you so much and I'm so when I say I'm so proud of my daughter I really am you know she really hung on to Jehovah he was our strength every day, you know, thinking about words and expressions that are found in his word, the Bible, or even about the hope, but what he does for us every day now, and what he will do for us in the future, helps us to keep going, you know, and so we're happy and we don't put ourselves 
in this moment, but we, we put ourselves in that future hope, you know. So that's where my thoughts stay. We talk about it all the time. Just yesterday, um, or two days ago, we were talking about what's the first thing we're gonna say to daddy when we see him again. And Raza said, the first thing that I'm gonna say is, can you please kiss mommy? <laughs> They know, they know we're, we've all, like, from the, mo from the moment it all started in Yuma, it's been on the go, one after the other. Like, you had no time to pity yourself, to feel bad. You had to put your big girl panties on because this was life-threatening and life-saving things that needed to happen. And even after he passed, we were still on the, cause it was out of nowhere. I, I did not expect him to take the route that he did when he did but I understand why he did it and I supported that decision. Afterwards though, we were still on such a, you know, fight or flight mode. We're in fight mode. You know, we were fighting for his life. We were fighting to, you know, give him comfort and let him know we're here, that he doesn't have to, you know, worry by his side all the time. You know, that was, that's a strong energy that is needed. And after he passed, we still carried that strong energy. And it's just now that I felt like now was the right time. It just kind of feels like all the boundaries or a lot of the boundaries that I had up regarding this situation has just I don't want it there because at first I was not sharing things on social media because I needed to protect our family but at now it felt like that protection was a cage there's so many beautiful things to sh share and speak about you know Vaughn and his healing the way that I was there for him the way that the people who were in the medical field, but were truly just godsends to Vaughn at that time. You know, I, I want to speak about that because that's, it's in my heart and it's beautiful and hopefully it gives someone else hope. But even if it doesn't help in any situations now, just knowing that there's a future hope where we get to see the people that we have lost. That's a real hope. And I hope through my example now in this new chapter of our lives with Vaughn no longer here, I hope that, you know, my example, our family's example is something that can be something that people look to for strength because these are things that would break a person just me finding my husband alone, alone, that's bad enough. But then to pile and pile and pile, but still I was not giving into fear and I still held my ground and I still held Jehovah's hand right up until his very last breath. And even now I'm holding his hand knowing that I am going to see Vaughn again one day yeah. yeah 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 we miss him dearly you know we miss him um but it's it's a pause right it's a pause and the hope is to see him once again on a beautiful earth in paradise like conditions where he's no longer having to cope with anything that would cause him pain or suffering. Um, none of us will. Um, I was looking. 
Do I have my phone? Right there? The blue? No, that's you want me to go get it? it? I, it's probably in your kitchen. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I have my glasses in here anyway, either. Yeah. So, there we go. Anyway. I think she wants to share scripture. Is that okay? Um. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Because I'm, I'm mama. <laughs> yes. Mama's going to always have to share her scriptures. Yeah. <laughs> this is has to do with those who are dealing coping with painful thoughts right now um, because I noticed a lot have painful stories a lot of you have had painful experiences and the scripture if you want to if you can write it down or you'll probably see this again is taken from Isaiah 65 17 and this is God's promise to us. He says, for look, I'm creating a new heavens and a new earth. And the former things will not be called to mind, nor will they come up into the heart. Imagine a time where you won't have to cope with things that have caused you, your heart to break. It's going to be with all the beautiful things that you experience, those painful experiences are not going to be remembered. There will be no reason your loved one's back. There's no more sickness. No, no more painful thoughts. And that will happen on a new cleansed earth. And if I could remember this, I found this scripture so beautiful. I'm just hoping I remembered which one. Speaking about Jehovah. Isaiah 25, 8. It poetically describes our hope. It says, at Isaiah 25, 8, He will swallow up death forever and the sovereign Lord Jehovah will wipe away the tears from all faces he will the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth meaning our sin our inherited sin is gone for all for Jehovah himself has spoken it In that day, they will say, look, this is our God. We have hoped in him. And he will save us. This is Jehovah. We have hoped, on, hoped in him. Let us be joyful and rejoice in the salvation by him. That hope is real. You know, many people pray for it. When they pray for thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven there's no suffering in heaven you're asking for it to be no suffering on earth um, life the way God intended it to be prior to Adam and Eve sinning so anyway just to share these thoughts with you these encouraging thoughts these are the kinds of thoughts that Vaughn learned about, which made him so happy. These are the things that he looked forward to, you know, and these are the things he hoped in. Mm -hmm. We love you so, so very much, mm -hmm. and we want to thank you, and we hope that you can look forward to those things too 
and it's a hope that we see will happen in the near future. We love you much. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye-bye.